Hi everyone, welcome back to Cairo Max. We're here with our first video in July. Uh, today, we are talking about bad habits. Um, not bad habits like chewing on your nails, but bad habits that kill your marketing efforts. Um, I don't wanna make it sound like if you're doing these things or not doing these things, then all your marketing efforts are for naught because that's not really what it is. One of the things I like best about marketing is that there's always room for improvement. No matter how well your marketing is going, you can always improve from that. You can take it up another notch. So today we're gonna to go over some of the top bad habits that I see on a regular basis and that way you can be on guard against them and know what to do to make sure that you're not doing them at your chiropractic practice. Ready? Let's go. Bad habit number one, not tracking your results. Honestly, this is the number one bad habit. Um, I think a lot of people put time and effort into their marketing, but then don't ever follow up to see what that time and effort resulted in. If you're not tracking your results, you don't know where to go from here. Um, you did point A, but should point B be tweaked? Should it be um, scrapped altogether? You don't know unless you're tracking your results. So, track your results. <laughs> Number two, oh, I kind of already mentioned A and B. Um, not running A, B tests. I think I've talked about A, B testing on this channel here before, but as a recap, A, B testing is when you run two tests of almost exactly the same, except you've changed one thing in test B, and then test A is the original. And then you test that one thing that's different to see which performs better. If you're not running these A-B tests, you are just blindly assuming that that's the right image, that's the right messaging, that's the best subject line. Whatever it is, you're just guessing because you haven't done the study to see, yes, I've done the, I've done this testing and I know that A always performs better than B. Number three, not capturing contact information. Uh, I don't think we've really talked about lead generation much here before, um, but lead generation is an important part of your practice because it's through lead generation that you digitally gain clients. So if you are not capturing information when you can, for instance, when someone signs up for the newsletter list or when someone, if you don't have a contact form in general, but let's say you offer something like a um, free guide to your first chiropractic visit. You could make that a gated offer in which someone would need to provide their contact information. Um, this actually leads to a whole nother series because another question that you would want to ask is, is this content valuable enough that someone would give their contact information to me for that, for that information? Um, and that's a, that's a topic we can have at a later date. Maybe that'll be our next content series. But, um, but for now, just know that if you have an opportunity to capture contact information and you're not doing it, that's a bad habit. You should be, you should be capturing this contact information when you can, uh, when it makes sense for your audience and for your practice. Number four, not following through or following up. These two are definitely related here because if you are capturing the contact information but then not doing anything with it, what was the point of capturing the contact information in the first place? So follow through and follow up on your leads, whether they're warm or cold, uh, whether they're new or old, you can always keep sending emails, giving a call if you can. Uh, and then do the same thing when you are messaged on Facebook, when someone uh, emails you after receiving a newsletter from you, when someone comments on your blog post. Make sure you're monitoring all those channels so that you are engaging with your audience every chance you can. You never know when that audience is going to turn into a client. And number five, not monitoring trends or industry updates. In our industry here, within marketing, uh, it changes really quickly. That's all there is to it. So if you are not monitoring what's happening, you're going to be 
stuck and not being very effective in your marketing. So make sure you pay attention to what's going on. The good news is we talk a lot about this on Kyramax.com and especially on our blog. So you can always go to our blog and find out the various things we're talking about. We never give bad advice there and we have to stay on top of what's happening on a daily basis. So you can always check that out if you want a quick refresher. But in general, think about if you never uh, looked into what was happening in the chiropractic industry or updated your certifications or went to personal training or something like that, your, eventually your patients would catch on that you're not at the top of your game. And when you're a chiropractor who's also doing marketing for your chiropractic practice, you have to be on top of both games. Uh, that's why we're here to help. So if you have any questions, reach out to us. I'll leave the contact information uh, on the screen and below in the information box so it's easy to get in touch. Thanks for joining me today. Have a great weekend, you guys, and we'll see you next week. Bye.